What up, buff baffoons and ladies of Liquid Lakes? Time for another Donuts review. Today I thought I would do the classic Saints Row remake, remaster, whatever you want to call it, that came out in 2021, I believe. If I'm not positive, don't yell at me. And I thought I would base this game because it is a lot of the times I've seen a lot of versions of it being given away for free. It was, you know, PlayStation Plus's game for free sometime in the past year. I believe it was given away on Epic Games or something in the past few months as well. So I see this game all the time. I thought I would talk about it. First off, to get my general viewpoint of Saints Row as a whole, I have never played any other Saints Row game. I don't personally know why. I did think I wasn't really into gaming when it came out. And I've always been a Grand Theft Auto fan. And I think perhaps when it first came out, I wasn't gaming as much. And it looked like the Grand Theft Auto ripoff. So for some reason, that would be the wrong way. And then as time flew by and as I got more into gaming, the graphics it just didn't look very up to date for the older games. So, I just never cared to pursue it. Flash forward to now, or when this game originally came out, and the reviews were terrible. Everyone hated the game. Any review you can find talked about how subpar the graphics were, and animations, and glitches, and it just wasn't a product of its time. And I feel like coming off of Cyberpunk... 2077 which came out right when the you know around the time that the PS5 first came out and when that game came out it got a lot of slack because of all the glitches obviously with Cyberpunk but it was also getting slack I feel because the new next generation of gaming was released and you know Cyberpunk at the time wasn't a new form of graphics we haven't seen before but Reflecting on it now and seeing, you know, Saints Row in comparison, the amount of detail and exactness in a game like Cyberpunk is truly incredible. And it's glaringly obvious compared to games that came out after, like the Saints Row game, which doesn't even come close to how good it looks. And, and it's a game that came out after it. So with all that being said you'd think this game sucks. You'd think it's a pretty terrible game. Uh, but actually giving it a try, because I was able to get it for such a uh, minimal price, I can say this game does have a lot of fun to it. I, I don't truly understand the anger or hatred it got. Uh, I can see, you know, understand why glitching and, and things like that might be negative. But for what you get, it's not so bad. Um... You know, first, as negatives, you can obviously say that the graphics aren't cyberpunk level. And, yes, yeah, so you have to accept that. It doesn't mean that it's bad. The level of customization you get in the game, I really enjoy, especially when I've been playing so much cyberpunk lately. You know, the fact that you can't change your car or make real, you know, paint modifications or anything in that sense. In cyberpunk, when you have a game that allows it so freely with such a... Uh, pretty wide variety of car choices you can do I definitely can appreciate that and it and Saints Row definitely gives you that when it comes to paint paint styles you know tinting and, and rim changes and headlights I mean it honestly gives you a you know need for speed Gran Turismo level of car customization you know in a game that's supposed to be like Grand Theft Auto so I definitely can appreciate that same thing said about, you know, the character you get to play as. You can customize them in a lot of ways. You know, I'm, I'm not the type to do it, but you can make them fully naked and just walk around with their, their peaches and berries and all that fun jazz. So that's always nice as well. Uh, they have a, a somewhat decent amount of guns you can use that kind of make the game a variety and has that odds of difference, you know, higher levels unlock better guns, which is what I think kind of makes the game stay fun and kind of gives you something to shoot for is getting those different guns and, you know, which is easily lost sometimes in a game that's a third person view. 
and you know the missions overall aren't so bad either i i've also enjoyed the dlc they've released it's creative enough the landscape you get when you get to play this game you're, you're in like a makeshift las vegas of sorts is what you normally are going to see and they give you a nice variety of little different things to do such as you know choosing to get out of your car you can shoot cars while on the run and a chase scene like you're seeing here and and you know fight them they have like side missions like that they have a full side mission where you just have to get you know ran over by cars and until you get high enough points to complete the mission for security not, not disability fraud or insurance fraud or you know ambulance chases all that fun stuff you know so they have a good little variety is it repetitive in the sense of, you know, how any open world game has repetitive missions? It sure does, but the, the amount of fun they put onto it, the personality they add to it, the amount of choices you have when it comes to, like I said, cars and paint and vehicles and weapons and, and the way you can handle things, it's good enough to get this game and to play it where I can say confidently you'll enjoy the game and I think you'll have a fun time. It's not a $50 game in any sense uh, and the game I believe knows that for sure now. I'm quite positive that you can standardly get this game for probably 30 bucks, you know, and with like DLC and everything, probably 45 bucks for everything max. But like I said, this game has not only been given away a few times as, you know, a free game, but it's always constantly on sale if you just wait a month or two at worst. If I were to say what I feel like this game should be worth or the value of this game, with DLC and everything, you know, the full game, 30 bucks would probably be pretty fair. You get the whole game and DLC, 30 bucks. Like I said, the game alone, maybe a $15 game, maybe 25 bucks. $15 for the game is pretty fair. $10 for the DLC and everything. So 25 in total would be a fair price to pay for the game. I mean, and I think that might be a realistic thing to get it on sale one day for all that for $25. I'd say if you get it for $20 or less with everything, it's a steal and it's definitely worth doing. And I would, I would pick it up for that price or anything cheaper than $20 for a fact. I, mean, I don't think you'll regret it at all. It's a good game. It still holds up even in 2024. Uh, you know, graphics have not fortunately surpassed any type of great level since generation of ps5 and series x has happened which is a shame i really can't wait for whatever year happens that we finally get fucking games that strictly only come out for that and they stop pandering to the old versions of consoles but it's, it's not happened yet i don't know if it does happen how different it will really be and how different the game will be i i don't even get i stopped even thinking about it who knows if uh, if it will be that big of a difference once it actually happens, let's hope it is. But this game's still worth it. If you are thinking in 2024, should I buy it? Does it still hold up? Doesn't seem like it even held up back then. It's definitely got to not hold up now. I think the game overall is fun. Good customization, especially if you feel like it was lacking in Cyberpunk and you like to modify things so you can drive around town in your custom car with your custom guns and gold weapons and diamonds and fucking whatnot. I think it holds up. So, hope this helps you figure out if it's worth it for you. If you turn out to play it and not like it, let me know what you didn't like about it. Later, guys.